Here is the current Premier League table. As you can see, we've got a game in hand. That is again Sheffield United away at Bramall Lane. Then we need to win that and hope that Aston Villa will beat Manchester United at Old Trafford. We beat Fulham at the Etihad. And with six Premier League matches to go, we will go top of the Prem. Easy, right? Let's find out in today's episode, my friends. Welcome back to our My Player Career Mode. Thank you, as always, for all of your incredible support and taking time to watch one of my videos. Appreciate all of you who leave me lovely comments and just generally support what I do. So thank you all so much for that. I hope that you're all feeling fantastic and having an awesome day. Along with our game against Sheffield United, the plan is to play four matches today, which will hopefully take us to 33 Premier League matches. That's because in there as well, We've got our second leg of the quarter-final of the Champions League against BSC Young Boys before we have home games against Fulham and Watford. Spoke about our run in last episode. I said it was a fairly, I wanted to say, favourable one for us. The only tricky games I had down on paper was Liverpool and Chelsea both away. But at that point in time, you know, that's away in the future. We might be out of the title race by then if this doesn't go to plan against Sheffield United, Fulham, Watford and Forest. So... Big, big matches, ones that you'd expect we'd win. But who knows with the Premier League, it is a real tricky league to play in. Anybody on their day can beat anyone, which is why it's said to be one of the best leagues in world football. So, yeah, let's see how we get on today. 500 likes would be absolutely awesome, as I say all the time. And uh, without further ado, we're going to jump into this episode. Sit back, relax and hopefully enjoy, my friends. I don't plan on playing all of the game either in the second leg against Young Boys. That's because the first leg, we did the job essentially, and it looks like we're already through to the semi-finals. So it will give me a bit of a much needed rest as we head into game here at Bramall Lane. You can see only really Haaland not quite fully fit for this one. So we're hoping for a top, top performance from the boys as we want to start with a victory. Five at the back from Sheffield United. And let's see if we can pick up three points here. Here is Rodri for Manchester City. There is space on this right-hand side. He plays Haaland. Now Foden. Haaland through the middle. Foden. Chouameni. Nicely done. Phil Foden will smash the ball into the top corner. And Manchester City will lead after only seven or eight minutes, in fact, here at Bramall Lane. And when the shot came in from the edge of the penalty area from Phil Foden, you saw a sense as soon as it left his boot that was heading for the top corner. And again, it's, we've seen this type of defending before from teams where they just get so fixated on the runners that Manchester City have. They don't put pressure on the ball. We saw it in the Champions League against young boys in the previous episode. We've just seen it here as Foden smashes us in front. Costa driving City forwards. And now Valverde finding the feet of Foden. Foden finds Haaland. Haaland plays it across. We will get there as well. And we will finish. I was wondering initially what the pass from Haaland was, but it was wonderful. And we finish on the right side. Two shots, two goals for City. Clinical so far in the opening 20 minutes here. Again, it's wonderful work by City to create this. The vision from Haaland there, sublime. Lays it across, can't miss, we don't miss. 10 minutes to go until half-time. City in control of this one. As we go and search for goal number three, as Foden's ball will find Haaland. Haaland will play it. We're on that right side again, but it's not going to matter because our finishing boots are well and truly on. And we've got our third. And when I say three shots, three goals, you best believe we're in goal scoring form in this one. And that is wonderful to see with some crucial games coming up. Again, it's Haaland turning provider. But again, it's that weaker right side. You wouldn't be able to tell, though, with the sublime finish on show. We are back underway for the second half and we're looking to pick up where we left off. Gear Chirida on this right-hand side. Haaland squares it and it is our fourth. We just pass it past the goalkeeper. It's the hat-trick. We take the match ball and Manchester City take over here at Bramall Lane. Gear Chirida, freedom down that right-hand side. They are unable to cut out the cross. The ball finds its way to Haaland. Haaland picks us out. In fact, all three of my goals now assisted by our number nine. Final 17 minutes of the game here. And there is a substitution pending for Manchester City as we will be leaving the field of play. But can we turn provider for one chance before we do leave? We will. And Chouameni gets our fifth. 
It's our final contribution to this game as we are about to be replaced here at Bramall Lane. And the initial cross doesn't work out. The second one, though, the first one was just like the idea of trying to whip it into that corridor of uncertainty and ask someone to get on it. The second time, though, we actually picked out Chiumeni and he picked out the back of the net. And there is that substitution coming through for Manchester City. Rodrigo on as we go off here in this one after a hat trick. Into the final 10 minutes of this one then. Gomez bringing Sheffield United forwards. They will have a chance maybe here of a consolation, but it'll be nothing more than that as Bogle, right-hand side. They're reluctant to put the ball in, but when they finally do, they create. And Edison has to save. He wants his clean sheet intact. And at the moment, that is how it is going. But Sheffield United now looking... I mean, I suppose they've got nothing to really lose, right? They can start sending more and more players forwards. The worst thing that's going to happen is they concede a sixth. But at this point, so be it. Foden on the break now. But there's still five, six, seven Sheffield United players making it back here. But still, Chiuameni is found. And Chiuameni, big save. Hornos with the save. Rodrigo picks up the loose ball. Can he find the chance to put the cross in? Goes back the way of Giotarida. Lovely as he finds Foden. Foden. Valverde. There is six. And Sheffield United concede once more. And there we go. Full-time results. What a performance in match day one. We had this against Leicester. We were good in that game. And then we know what happened when we took on Arsenal in match number two. So let's not let that happen in this one. It's actually the Champions League against Young Boys, our next fixture. So step one was beat Sheffield United. We've just done that. Step two was have Villa beat Manchester United. But they've just come off the back of a 2-0 defeat to Spurs. So I don't know what their confidence is going to be like heading into that game. And then step three, of course, we'd beat Fulham. We'd go top of the Prem. Before that, though, we've got young boys in the quarterfinal here. Second leg. First leg finished 4-0. So the job was pretty much done. Arguably, could sim this game. And we'd still probably be through. But... We are going to go ahead and play this, even if I only feature for the first half of it. Gertrida, finding my feet. Chiuameni to my left. Chiuameni, Valverde! Oh, Bernardoni! Bernardoni! Right hand denies Valverde. Rodri, Gertrida, as again City will come forwards. Gertrida, right hand side, overlapping run as he does so well. Haaland! Bernardoni again is there. You just expect when the ball reaches him, there's one outcome. But no, Bernardoni is up for tonight's game and he does not want City scoring early on in this one. That corner, I tried to whip it in with a bit more pace, but Bernardoni comes out and claims it with ease. It made it look so simple. As uh, Manchester City straight back on the ball again, though. This is the story for young boys. It's every time they clear it, the ball comes back at them. And Phil Foden, now Haaland, now Rodri. Rodri gets it towards me and this time we will not be... Denied! There's the goal! And we have come out for the second half, but the substitution is pending and I will be going off momentarily. I did say I was only probably going to play the first half of this one. Chiuameni Haaland giving away to Blum as he will play it forward for Noel. And as I say, this change is pending. I would like to have one more say on the game if possible before I do go off. Rodri, now Valverde. He can find Chiuameni. Chiuameni. Back the way of Valverde, who've been very patient in the build-up. And that ball has been deflected. We still look to try and win it. Chiuameni will get this ball to Giotarida. Giotarida now will play it inside to myself as we pull it back for Chiuameni. Blocked in the middle by Fosu Mensa. And that was the moment to have our say on the game again. Having said that, the ball has not gone out yet. And it means the change will not happen yet either. And because the ball hasn't yet gone out of play, the change has been still pending. We're still on the field of play. Giotarida beaten by Emery. And now Noel in the box. Sedison's right hand. Denies young boys an equaliser on the night. And now the substitution will come through. We go off. Rodrigo is on. As young boys have a corner. And that will be that, my friends. We advance to the semi-finals of the Champions League, in all honesty. Fairly quiet game here in this one. But as we know, the job was done in leg one. And there are the results from the other games. So Barcelona make it through. Chelsea are into the semi-finals and PSG as well. So we will face one of Barcelona, Chelsea or PSG. You'll see that draw at the end of today's episode. And this was what we alluded to at the start of today. Seven matches to go. 
The gap is one point between us and Manchester United. We've got Fulham there, of course, against Aston Villa at Old Trafford. I will try my best to keep you updated with any goals that do happen. As for the team news, it's in. There are the two starting 11s and a few fitness issues for City. We've played a lot of games in recent weeks. I'm hoping that won't play a part, but we know what we've got to do and we've just got to hope that Villa can do us a favour elsewhere. 31 games played, 24 goals conceded. Is phenomenal from City and we were nearly in front. Why? Why could that ball not have just nestled in? As we look for the top corner, we hit the woodwork. Chiuameni, oh, he tried to play me. And in the end, it was intercepted. Oh, man, that was a phenomenal effort. And it's just come back off the bar. No, Dragos is now trying to get through for Fulham. We've done enough to defend it and keep hold of the ball. As that will now be a chance again, will it, for us to look to play forwards. Aruho on the right-hand side. Here he is then. Now Haaland. Haaland's back heel. Finds me! I can't believe what I'm seeing. I can't believe what I am seeing. Please, please don't tell me it is going to be one of those days where we do everything but score. The first one was a phenomenal curling effort, which we were unlucky. That one... Goes in nine times out of ten. But of course, this is the one time we hit the post. Haven't seen any updates from Old Trafford yet. So I'm assuming that's still nil-nil between Manchester United and Aston Villa as we're trying to break away here, away from Frendrup. But can we still get away from Fulham? We are away from Dominguez as well. Who is with me in the attack? Well, we're into the area, trying to pull it across towards Haaland. Zuma gets in the way. We block the pass, though. Haaland's got to get there. He doesn't. It's a game of nearly moments. And it's not enough for City. Pressure put on here by Foden. What will happen here as Fulham are trying to get away? And they will now get away, will they? No! Ref, you can't blow the whistle there! We're in! Oh, what has this first half been? There's moments. I, like, I try my best to maintain composure when I'm commentating. I don't know if you can hear. I am smiling right now. Um, but, like, this first half. Wow! Hit the bar, hit the post. Ref calls half time when we're through. So, turns out, Manchester United ahead against Villa. 2 0 at Old Trafford. That's nice. Valverde's shot, though, will be blocked by Zuma. And yeah, I might have just missed the goal updates in the first half because at half time, United looks set for three points. So, we need a goal here. Too many. Finding my feet. Now we will play Valverde. He's found Holland! Yes! Get in! Oh, I mean, it still could be one of those days. It still could. Let's not kid ourselves. It's only 1-0 and there's still half an hour to play and Fulham haven't had a shot on target yet. So that was the goal we needed to put us in front. And now we need to do our utmost to defend the lead that we worked hard to get here. As Bravo is now looking forward for Fulham into a central position. Pal Torres will block. Valverde finds Foden. Foden finds Haaland. Haaland plays it through. One more from Ruben Diaz to get the ball off towards me as we're bearing down on goal. Gone wide, but it doesn't matter because we will still finish. City 2, Fulham 0. Yes! That should be the three points. There's a smile on my face and any potential slip up avoided here. But it still means we're still a point behind Manchester United because Villa, there's been nothing else from Old Trafford. So I only assume that United are cruising to their victory there. Sanchez, good tackle, Arujo. And the feet to get us out of there was brilliant. Ruben Diaz, I think he's playing like central defensive midfield or something right now. As the ball will be found towards us, Valverde is ahead of me. But as we now will play it his way and he finds the third, in fact... With a wonderful header, Manchester City all of a sudden are demolishing Fulham. I mean, this sort of scoreline was, was not really surprising or is not surprising. But given the circumstances at half-time where we had a pretty frustrating first half by all accounts, I wasn't expecting it to be 3-0 with 15 minutes to go. Foden, Valverde, Valverde's cross, our touch. There's the fourth. Manchester City are going to try and keep the pressure on United as much as they possibly can. But they will have to do it again. Full time from the Etihad. Manchester City 4, Fulham 0. The final score. Six games to go. And as I said, goal difference far in our favour. So 
it doesn't really matter all the extra goals we score, provided that we win the game. Fulham against United at Old Trafford. We just saw what Fulham are like at the minute, so you'd expect United to win that. Meanwhile, we've got Watford who are 15th. We've beaten Sheffield United today. We've beaten Fulham today. Now it's Watford. So Arsenal, I do believe, are playing Manchester United in the future at some stage. When is that game? Because that could be the one that helps us out in terms of making sure. There you go. It's in May. So maybe that's where United will slip up. But remember, we've got Chelsea and Liverpool still as well to come. So they've got Arsenal. We've also got some tricky games. Watford to finish today's episode at home for us as well, much like Manchester United. There's the two teams and into this one we go. The annoying thing is as well as Watford. Test Edison early on, he's equal to the test. Yeah, the annoying thing is that we know no matter what we do, someone somewhere, that's a free header for Milenkovic. Someone somewhere has got to do us a favour and make United drop points because if they win their remaining six, no matter what we do, they're champions. So, like I say, that is the annoying factor. And here we could have been 1-0 down. The break could be on, though, for us to go 1-0 in front, in fact, as we approach Watford's goal. And it was inevitable, inevitable where that was going. Just so much pace. And Manchester City lead after what was nearly Watford in front at the Etihad. I love it. I love when corners are like that and there's just so much space for me to stretch my legs because I know I've got the pace and not many are keeping up with me in world football. And at that point, 1v1, we've got to score. Valverde to Haaland. Haaland's touch is brilliant and he opens up the space for himself. And he does get his shot away. It will be a City corner. Nice little touch from Haaland there to open up that bit of space as the corner will be delivered by Rodrigo into the near post. Away it goes. Only as far, though, as Pau Torres, whose volley was very good. It's a nice ball through. Vignato holds off the challenge. Vignato across. Jensen scores. Offside flag. Goes up and saves Manchester City. I mean, I think it's the right decision. We'll see here. Yeah, 100% the right decision. Good call. Um, City needed that, though, because it was a nice ball through. And Vignato gets in. Arguably should have gone himself. Well, should have gone himself now, knowing that the chance resulted in an offside call. I did not ask for that ball, by the way, from the free kick. It was just played towards me, and it was straight out of play. So we lose possession. Three minutes to go until half time, And the finish to the first half has actually been very good from Watford so we're probably just wishing for the half-time whistle here Manchester City just to make sure we do get into the break at 1-0 in front Vignato forwards again Arujo in with the challenge and now Rodri forward to Haaland and that is the end of the first 45 minutes here at the Etihad what's going on at Old Trafford half-time Manchester United 1 Fulham 1 and there is one thing that you cannot Cannot deny plays its part this late in the season. And that is the pressure. You see what it does to teams. And at some stage, Manchester United, the more we put the pressure on them, will feel it. And maybe they're feeling it now as they're 1-1 with Fulham. And they need to try and make sure they don't draw points. Oh, then they makes it two here. And the Etihad is bouncing because Manchester City are going back top if it stays like this. Please, Fulham, hold on. Please hold on. A draw. They drop points, we're back top. They don't even have to lose United for us to return top. Just draw the game and we've done it. With six games to go. Well, there'll be five after this one. Valverde makes it two. And just gives us that bit of breathing space. Speak about pressure. We're well and truly putting it on Manchester United right now. I mean, how? I wasn't commentating because I thought there's no way, no way Watford score that. Jensen's just hit a stunner. The ball goes into a central position here. Oh, no. No. It's one of those. It's just one of those that you can hit that so many times. Where's the goalkeeper, by the way, in the replay? Edison's just disappeared in that replay, apparently. 
Apparently that we didn't have a goalkeeper for that. Unless I just missed him, but I'm pretty certain he just disappeared during that replay. Giacarida forwards for Foden. Haaland to his left. Foden plays me instead. We skip away from a challenge and actually get the chance to shoot and we will make it three. It's restored our two goal advantage and we needed that. We needed that. Oh yes, get in. That's exactly, exactly what we had to have happen here because otherwise this is going to be a tough 20 minutes where Watford were feeling all of a sudden more confident of growing and getting back into the game following Jensen's strike. I mean, don't know what the goalkeeper's doing. Should do better for me, but I don't really care because it's 3-1 now. We're almost, by the way, at a goal a game in the Premier League. 32-33, in 33. what a return. And there's chance that it might actually happen in this one if we can still create. As we go back for Foden, Foden finds Giacarida. He plays Haaland. Haaland, it is absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. 4-1. Still, though, no update from Old Trafford. So please say that means there's been no more goals. And in fact, if there has to be a goal, let it be the way of Fulham. Because that'll mean that we are top of the Prem. Is this another hat-trick for us as well, actually? It is. Don't know what's happened today. I'm just in good goal-scoring form. I feel pretty good. I feel any time I get through, I know it's going to hopefully result in a goal. Aside from those, you know, two chances we hit the bar in and the post in against Fulham. So what happens when you're feeling good, you play well. 33 and 33 now in the Prem. Corner ball to the away side. We've got a minute plus injury time to go. Pau Torres heads away. It'll fall for Foyth. And Fulgini's ball is brilliant. Ford onside. Edison saves. I mean, it doesn't keep his clean sheet intact, but still a very good save nevertheless. Four additional minutes by the official. And Cabore's header. We will get there. And I think... He's given a free kick for handball. All right, fair enough. Let's see what Fulgini can do from said free kick. Vignato now plays it short. The free kick is wasted by all accounts. Paul Torres with the ball forward and that takes us into full time. We'll collect the match ball here and we'll see what the result was at Old Trafford. Fingers crossed. Manchester United 2, Fulham 1. They got the goal that put them back in front. Five games to go. It's as we were. And our draw for the Champions League is now made. You've seen it there. It is going to be Manchester City taking on Barcelona for a place in the Champions League final. We're so close to the trophy for the first time. In fact, I think last episode was titled about the fact five more games or something to win the Champions League finally. Well, we're now three games away from doing that. The double leg in the semi-final. And then the final, should we get there? Oh, I hope. I hope we can do it. I really do. I don't think we've got another chance after this because I do think that this could be our final season, especially with how close the new game is to coming out. We shall see, though. How it plays out. Chelsea PSG in the other tie for confirmation for the Premier League. Five matches to go. Chelsea not out of it yet either. So don't count them out just yet. But we've got Forest next, who currently sit 14th. And United play Newcastle, who are 17th. We've seen they're having a bad season. But who knows? Maybe Newcastle can be the one to do as a favour. Fulham very nearly did there. Just not quite able to hold on to the draw. My friends, that will be the end of today's episode, though. A massive thank you for watching. If you did enjoy it, a like would be greatly appreciated. Before we go, I do want to show you the player stats as well. We are top of the goal-scoring charts in the Champions League and for the Prem as well. It looks like the golden boot is going to be ours. I don't think there's anyone else close to us. There is not. Haaland is the closest on 21, followed by Pulisic on 19. We've also got 25 assists to our name as well. We're having a tremendous season. Could you imagine if it leads, though, to no title at the end of it? I've also been seeing some comments as well about where I've put my skill points. So I'll quickly run through this for you as well. If you want to take a look in more detail, then pause the episode on whichever bit you want to copy and you'll be able to see them in more detail. And that way you can then copy it if you wish to do so. As I say, there's been some of you lovely people asking me where my points are allocated. So here you are. Until next time, though, stay safe. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Thank you all so much, and I shall see you all back here for another episode very, very soon. Look after each other, and adios!